We will read from the Gospel according to John, chapter 9 and verse 39. And Jesus said to him, I have come unto judgment in this world, so that those who see may not see, and those and as many were from the Pharisees, they heard this, and they said, Are we blind also? And Jesus said unto them, If you are blind, then you wouldn't have seen, but now you say that we see, so your sin abides. Truly I tell you, whoever does not enter through the gate and to the court of the sheep, but he went from another pl place, he is a thief and a robber, but whoever enters through the gate to him the pastor opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his sheep by their name and he ca calls them out and when he uh, takes the sheep out he goes before them and the sheep follow him because he know they know th his voice but they will not follow a stranger but they will go away from him because they do not know his voice this parable um, said um, Jesus said to them but they didn't understand the things that he spoke to them so again Jesus said to them truly truly I tell you that I am the gate of the sheep whoever came before me they are thieves and robbers but the sheep didn't hear them I am the door if anyone enters by me he will come and be saved and he will come out and he will find um, a place to be shepherd the thief does not come rather than to to um, kill and to destroy but I came so that they may have life and abundant I am the good shepherd the good shepherd lays his soul over the sh for the sheep but he who is a hireling who does not have his sheep the sheep when he see the wolf he goes away and the wolf takes them and scatters them but he who is hireling he goes away and he doesn't stay because he does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and I am known by mine as the Father knows me I also know the Father and I will lay my soul for the sheep. I have many more sheep which are not of this court and I have to gather them also and they will hear my voice and one um, and the flock will become one. For this reason my Father loves me because I lay my soul so that I may take it back. No one takes uh, away from me, but I uh, give it. I have authority to lay my soul, and again I have authority to receive it. This is the commandment that I have received from my Father. So, separation became again among the Jews because of these words, and they said, He's a demon-possessed, why do you hear him? And others said that these words are not of a demon-possessed man. Can a demon uh, open the eyes of the blind? Now the inauguration in Jerusalem took place and it was winter and Jesus walked in the temple and so the Jews surrounded him and said to him, Till when do you hold in doubt our soul? If you are Christ, then say to us boldly this. And then Jesus said to them that I have told you and you do not believe. The words that I do in the name of my Father, this witness about me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep. And as I told you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give to them eternal life, and they shall not be lost in eternity, and no one shall take them from my hand. My Father who gave them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them from the hand of my Father. I and my Father are one. Amen. So the first issue is that the man may choose to have the Lord as his pastor. But the most important for us is that we may be sheep of the Lord. Not to think that we are, we are. Not to believe that we are and not to hope that we are 
sheep of the Lord. Because if we have this belief, if we have this opinion that we are sheep of the Lord and we are not, then even if we are asking for a good pastor, the good pastor shepherds only sheep. So, Yes, I want the Lord to be my pastor. But I have to be sure and I have this certainty that indeed I am a sheep of the Lord and it's not just that I I believe that I am, but I'm truly a sheep of the Lord. The Lord did an amazing miracle. He healed a blind man who was blind from his birth and the Jews who were the people of God who had the law of God whom the Lord had bought them from the nations they said that he is a sinner to whom did they say they said this about this uh, blind man from birth whom he healed and he restored his sight and this man who was sheep of the Lord he came confronted with theologians of his time with the religious people which were trying to convince him that he who healed him was a sinner But his arguments, his experience were decisive. You are saying that he is a sinner, but we know that God does not hear sinners. But only if someone is godly and he does his will, him, he hears. And from eternity, it had never been heard that someone had opened the eyes of a man who was blind from birth. Hear this argument, hear this wisdom, revelation. If he was not from God, then he could do nothing. Can a demon open the eyes of blind, of a blind man? They heard this, they saw, and they hardened their heart even more. We believe strongly that, that they believe that they are the people of God and that they are, were waiting for the Messiah. But because they were not sheep, because they just thought that they were sheep, because they were reading in their synagogue that the Lord is my shepherd I will lack nothing and with all certainty I consider that by reading this psalm they would always pray they would have always prayed that this would be his pa their pastors as we do this day but the Lord is a pastor but they weren't sheep Is this not a terrible thing, brethren? For this reason, do you know what Christ says? That two will be in one bed. The sheep will be taken, but the one that won't be a sheep will be left back. Two will be in the field and they will be working. The sheep will be taken, but the one that will not be a sheep will be left back. How important it is That God um, affairs me that I'm a sheep of his flock. And that I'm not wrong. Because many after the door will shout, will we cry out, Lord, open to us. 
We were sheep of your flock. We ate before you. We drank before you. You have taught us in the squares. We did many miracles in your name. We have cast out demons. We have prophesied. We were sheep of your flock. And the Lord will answer them, Go away from me. You were never sheep of, lamb of my flock, because you are the one who worked iniquity. Ten were the virgin. The five of them were sheep of the flock of the Lord, but the rather five were not. They thought that they were. And as they went out to meet and wait for the Lord to come and receive them and take them and uh, put them in so that they would celebrate all together the wedding. But when the Lord came, they were trying to find oil in order to light their lamps because they were not sheep of the Lord. Demas, Timothy, uh, even Paul, they started together. Demas thought that he was, and for this reason he was not. So he was taken, uh, drawn away from the world and he left. Which, my beloved brethren, means that the word of God is true. Our soul is always in danger. And we have to examine what is the good, the pleasing, and the perfect will of God. And that this may be proved in our life that not only do we believe that we are His sheep, that, uh, in, but that God indeed recognizes us as His sheep. And for this reason, our Lord Jesus Christ is trying to reveal to this man, to these Jews, that my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they know me. My sheep, they weren't mine. The Father gave them to me. But everything that belongs to my Father, it's mine because I and my Father are one. He's trying. He's telling them that I have come for judgment. So that I may make those who um, do not see to see and those who think that they can see never to see anything. I don't know, my beloved brethren, but I consider that It's very important what we want to do to examine ourselves always and stand before the mirror of God, which is the Word of God, and to discern. Because one, this kind of mistake is terrible and it will have eternal consequences and consequences of perdition. Can you imagine to pray, to prophesy, even to preach, and even to minister, and even to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and not to be a sheep of the flock of the Lord, and to start to lack things. Now this is the first sign. And to get tired, and that the Lord does not give me rest. To start to lose my path and not to know where to go. Should I go on the north or the south? Where should I go? And the Lord not to come and lead me through the paths of His righteousness. And then my enemies to stand right before me and, and, and I to be terrified. Because I haven't understood 
that I am not a sheep of the flock of the Lord, so that I may repent and turn back to him, and that he may intervene into my life again from the start. Again from the start. I do not examine the desires of my flesh if they are according to the will of God. The desires of my eyes, my heart, if it is soft and tender or is it hardened and it cannot bear the love of God within it. The love of God does not um, have place for, for my, in my heart or that my spirit has been puffed up and I see mistakes to everyone and I see the perfect man and myself and forgive me may I say this again he sees my mind and he sees the perfection only to himself and he sees the mistakes to all the other people and I haven't understood that I have lost this ability of the sheep I might have had this but I've lost it and for this reason my beloved brethren God brings what will follow and which is written in the Word of God you will get tired and you won't find rest anywhere now this is a ring uh, bell your soul won't find rest you'll be thirsting and your soul won't be um, quenched your thirst won't be quenched you'll be found in dead ends you won't know where to go and there would be guidance of the Holy Spirit in your life and you will make decisions by yourself. And every decision that you might take won't come out good. You will be dreaming things which will never become in your life. You will hope and you will get disappointed. God is not bad. But he wants to show you, to show me, to show to all of us that something is not going well with your ability as a sheep, with the character of the sheep. You are no longer or very soon you won't be a sheep of the flock of the Lord. And for this reason you won't dwell in lo for a length of days and the house of God you won't be able to do this because in the path that you have chosen the grace of God and the mercy of God won't follow you and you won't be able to understand why is this happening and you will look on the right and on the left to find the reason of this and the more your flesh will rise up and the more your heart will become bittered and the more your spirit will become angry. For this reason, my beloved brethren, it is necessary that we may turn our look attentively in the Word of God. It is necessary. In any kind of situation that we may be found in, and in any kind of crossroad, no matter what is happening, the Word of God says that all the days of your life, the good ones or the bad ones, the grace and the mercy of God will follow you. It is necessary that we may insist and look into the perfect law of liberty so that we may discern Not how we see ourselves, but how God sees us that we are. Because wherever there is the desire of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the arrogance of life, 
that is the mindset of the world. To him, there is no love of God. There is not the love of God. He's finished. If your heart desires other things, not sin, it's not necessary to desire something that is sin, but you do not desire the paths of the righteousness of Christ, the rest that only the good pastor can give you. If you do not um, discern things not regard to others because this is a great trap that the devil um, puts to others that we may discern and look the mistakes of others and to forget that they are also mere man whose soul is in danger and then to judge and condemn and not be able to forgive and excuse things as if they were God the God excuses all think about it that God excuses me in my mistake and that you are not able to do this for me that God forgives my sin and that you cannot forgive my sin why because you are not sheep of the flock of the Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ comes to put in order our thoughts our faith he comes to put in order our self-knowledge by saying I am the good pastor the good pastor gives his life for the sheep and Paul says imitate me as I imitate Christ and Christ says that I lay my soul for the sheep and we what do we lay for the sheep but judgment and condemnation envy and anger And now here comes the proof whether you and I are the sheep of the Lord. Which is something um, now that we can understand how important it is. I am the good shepherd. And I know mine. And I am known by, by mine. I know the ones that are mine. I recognize them. Now this is a crucial question does God recognize you does Christ recognize you that you are his sheep I recognize mine but they also recognize me and they know me and how is this evident that they know me and they know me exactly as the Father knows me and I know him because the first lamb of God is Christ and as the Father recognizes me by, this, by saying this is my beloved son in the same way I recognize the Father that he is the heavenly, uh, the, uh, the heavenly Father and what did the Jews say? Tell us, are you the Son of God, the Messiah? Why do you not speak boldly? You have confused us. And the Lord said, I've told you, but you do not believe. The works which I do in the name of my Father, they confirm that I am the Son of God. You can understand the tree by its fruit. You can understand the Christian by his works, the works of faith, by the labor, labor of love and the hope um, and the patience of hope. Oh, these are the ones that witness about me, but you do not believe in me. 
Therefore, hear. You do not believe me because you are not of my sheep. But my sheep have one characteristic. They hear my voice and they understand it. They hear my word and they accept it. I know them because they follow me. And wherever I am, there is my servant. So the characteristic sign that confirms that someone is a sheep is that we hear his voice and that his voice rebukes us, strengthens us, encourages us and helps us. And that we follow him in any situation. We follow Christ. We are not lost. We know which path we have to follow. We know this. We know exactly we are not in the dead end. We are not in doubt and hesitation. We know. We know our weakness. Yes, we know. But we also uh, we know what is which is the word of God. We know who is Christ. And we know um, how to follow him. And only in my sheep I give life here on this earth and this in abundance. And I also give eternal life. And they are in safety. No one can take from my hand my sheep. And because my father is much greater, no one can take from his hand his sheep. So Christ interprets this, that the sheep are of my father and he has given them to me. To pastor them. And for this reason I lay my soul for the sheep. I sacrifice myself. Because I love them. Because they are mine. So my beloved brethren. It's an absolute need. An absolute need. To examine today ourself. This is an absolute need. The first characteristic which is important, it's the voice of Christ. And the voice of Christ is sweet. It's full of love. It's full of forgiveness. It's full of patience. It's with sweetness, with kindness, with care. It's full of the presence of God. How does God speak to you? And how do you respond in the voice of God? With anger? The good pastor is not like that. With wildness? With Anxiety with fear. The voice of God is not like that. So very easily I can discern my heart just from that. Do I have the character of the Lamb of God? Do I look like Him? Do I speak as he would speak? Do I forgive as he would forgive? Do I love as he would love? Do I minister as he ministered? So very easily can I say, Lord, I'm not a sheep of your flock. I'm lost. Please forgive me. Very easily I can say this. If I just think the last week and the last day of my life, 
I have nothing more to do and to say this even simpler as the word of God says. Therefore, brethren, all the things that are true, noble, righteous, clean, lovable, or those of, or of a good report, if there is a praise and a virtue, think about them. So easily can I understand whether I'm a sheep or not from the things that I'm thinking. Am I thinking about the praise and the virtue? Or am I thinking about bike sliding, about the fall and and the the bad situation of my brother? What am I thinking in my mind? Am I thinking and I forgive or am I thinking and I become angry? What am I thinking and what you are thinking, brother? It's only you and Christ who knows it. What I'm thinking, brethren, only Christ and I know it. And thoughts come in us. There is no doubt. But for this reason God comes and tells us. Now that you are caught from your thoughts. And you become angry. And your heart. Remember that you have to condemn these thoughts. Because you are in danger. To get out from the flock. Of the, of the sheep. And to be found out. Out. Because Jesus Christ is the door of the sheep and only with the character of Christ you will get into the court. If you are trying to get from another place that is with your strictness, with your with you being wild, with anything that you can imagine um, according to human righteousness, then you are a, thof, a thief and a robber. Neither are you, nor do you look with a good shepherd. How easily can I go today and know whether I am or not a sheep? And how easily can I today repent and to be sure that I am sheep of the flock of the Lord? How easily can this happen? How easily can I change my whole life? That I may stop uh, to lack love, hope, and faith, comfort, uh, strengthening, and rest. And that I may lack nothing. How easily can I do this? How easily? How easily can I become not only the sheep of the Lord but also the beloved sheep of the Lord. When I stand right uh, by the side of His road, when I stand by the side of His word, even if, if I am winded, then He will heal me. Even if I am tired, then He will give me rest. And even if I am afraid, He will give me power. How easily, brethren, this is the easiest thing that we can do is to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But we'll do this by hearing the voice of the Lord and following him. And then he. The Bible says. That he will put me in the flock and he will take me out of the flock. Why? So that he may lead me. But he will be the one who will go before me. He will clean the path. And he will turn me back and he will give me rest. That is, my whole life will be in his hands because I belong to him. I belong to him. But not according to my imagination. But having this certainty and the confirmation of the word of God and the seal of the Holy Spirit. I am the sheep of your Lord. I am weak and troubled though. But I am your sheep. I don't want to be strong and powerful and to be a goat. I want to be a sheep. 
so that my life may be in safety. And safety at all times. And that I may enjoy the life of Christ here in abundance and also the eternal life up there. I can say that the Lord is my shepherd, I will lack nothing. But again, I have to say that I am the sheep of the Lord. Christ, help me to continue. Help me, Christ, to walk in your tracks, to follow you. Because, my beloved brethren, the consequences are terrible. Nothing goes well when the love of God the Father is lost. When you cease to be sheep of the flock, nothing will go well. Your relationship with your wife will be ruined. With your children, there won't be any. Your relationship with your brethren will be distant. Your relationship with God will be quenched. Nothing will go well. And there won't be... Um, a chance to, for things to be corrected but if today I realize and understand and I do not believe brethren that there is any one of us who cannot understand this but only the Jews who were not sheep of his flock you do not understand my sheep you, because you are not sheep of my flock but we understand we are sheep of his flock but we have to continue to be So very easily we understand and we realize whether we are a sheep of his flock and how close to Christ we are. Only and only and not just that, um, from what we are thinking in our mind. What were we thinking the last days and the last hours? Just from that we can understand. Then we can understand from our works and our deeds. And the conclusion, the most important thing is also from the witness of Christ into our life. But I will insist on that. That the easiest thing is to understand what we are from what we are thinking, from what you are thinking, and from the things that are, I'm thinking to understand uh, where I am. When I fall at night to sleep, what am I thinking? When I uh, wake up and I start my day, what am I thinking? Brethren, please let us not let this mistake to rule in our life because it's destructive and it leads in destruction. Let us not live it. We will hear the voice of Christ. We will recognize it. We will follow him and we will be like him. Imitated, oh, imitates, imitators of Christ and his um, ability and his kindness and his forgiveness and his love and his patience and his embrace. And his words. And his prayer. In everything. We have one example that does not let us to make mistake. And this one is Jesus Christ and his word. I plead you brethren to rise up and ask this from God. That... This ability of the sheep will never be lost in our life. Because if it will it be lost, then we are led in the perdition. But if we keep this ability of the sheep vivid, then we belong in Christ. And no one t can take us from his hands. No one can take us from the hands of God. No one can take away, uh, can make us lack any good. Amen. Let us play, pray print from our heart with our whole soul.
that we may be find grace and be always sheep of the flock of the Lord from now on and in eternity. 